I'm Ian Thomas with Front Office Sports. I'm here with Dennis Page, CEO of Slam Media Inc. A lot of buzz around the brand since you reacquired in 2017. Tell me some of the impetus of bringing it back under your wing and tell me a little bit of some of the things you've been doing since uh, to sort of re, really re-energize some of, some of that property. All right. I started Slam 1994. Uh, just the idea of launching a hip-hop basketball magazine had never been done. There were a few other hip-hop publications. The Source, Vibe was out for a couple issues and just took that inspiration and just attached it to basketball because I'm a sick high school basketball fan and just, uh, you know, always have a lot of publishing ideas and just put it on the newsstand. It hit from day one and you know, it's just one of those things that was a success out of the box. So um, just kept growing it. In 1997, I launched a sister publication called Double XL, which was a hip hop magazine, which ultimately competed with the source and vibe and then had a sort of, you know, this urban stable of magazines and, you know, life was good, business was good. There was no internet. So uh, print was the way you, you know, pushed out all your information and content. So in 2000, we were approached by a company in LA called Peterson Publish Publishing. They had Hot Rod Magazine, a bunch of car magazines, and they also had Sport Magazine. So they saw Slam and how hot it was and they uh, wanted to buy it to put it into their sport division. I was like, cool, good check. But what was unique was they uh, kept me on as publisher. Mm -hmm. So uh, I continued to run Slam out of uh, the company here in New York. So uh, the internet hit, I'm not even sure when it hit, but I knew it hit and I was like, it's gonna be a, a dangerous place to be in publishing. So um, fast forward around 2015, uh, there were competitors like Complex and uh, Vice was out there. Everyone heavy uh, into original video content of which we were doing none. I think we had, you know, had our website, social on Facebook only and just no real legit commitment to the brand. So I was like, you know what, it's time to either walk away or try and buy it back. So uh, fast forward to August of 2017, I was, uh, had an investor back me and with a, some of our other uh, staffers and we bought Slam back and just from day one completely energized the brand with an injection of capital and just pushed out into uh, heavy social commitment, heavy video commitment, and then most importantly to get younger. So what we did was we went back into high school gyms across the country. A lot of kids, if you're 16, you play basketball um, in high school, you may not even know what slam is. You didn't grow up on it, you're too young. So we went back in, started producing high school mixtapes um, to get young, build out um, a lot more social channels. We had a high school channel, we had a, a kicks channel, mostly on Instagram, so now, uh, up to today, we have eight channels on Instagram and probably maybe 15 channels overall. Oh. Yeah. Merchandise is becoming part of your guys' business as well. I mean, yeah. I would imagine with that, hitting that youth audience, it's something that you guys are really sort of leaning into in that yeah. space. Um, I, I call myself the oldest hype beast in America. Um, very attuned to that. So anyway, when I bought it back, one of the, not only to get young in high school, but to finally sell a slam hoodie and a slam tee. So we created our original slam box hoodie, went out, bought uh, I think 100 orange hoodies off of Amazon, slapped the logo on it, opened up a Shopify store that afternoon, put them up online, sold 100 probably in two days, and then we were off and running. Simultaneously, we signed a deal with Mitchell and Ness mm -hmm. to license the slam covers for t-shirts and hoodies. Sure. So that was, a, let's say about a year ago, that contract was done. We had put out six slam cover tees with Mitchell and Ness, did phenomenal, phenomenal. Had our original, our most iconic cover was Allen Iverson, sold on ice cover. That blew out, it's for sale. Mitchellandnesses.com, it's in the Slam store, and also sold at retail. So Urban Outfitters, PacSun, 
um, in their various retail outlets. So that's a, you know, so slam merch, branded merch, as well as the slam covers through Mitchell Ness. So it's doing phenomenal. There's like an opportunity there, like you said, while the, the magazine sort of focus on the lifestyle side of the game to actually be a lifestyle brand within itself now as well, all these different avenues. Exactly. No, I really, hey look, there's a lot, you know, you got a bar stool doing merch, Bleacher Reports doing merch, everybody has a merch division, if you will. I think what Slam has, we have 25 years of legacy. So not only do we have our covers, but I think there's a history to the brand. And now with our reinvestment, if you will, I think the brand is bigger than ever. So hopefully the merch will just ride that wave. Sure. I see now making a little more investment into women's basketball and not just WNBA level, which I know a lot of outlets and publications are kind of diving yep. into more coverage, the athletics, so on and so forth. But like you said, women's basketball, young girls basketball at sort of all levels. I mean, what are you seeing there right now that Making you invest. In yeah, I, um, I had the idea about a year ago. Mm -hmm. I sort of, you know, to launch what became our uh, Instagram channel, W Slam. You know, I was really on the fence with it. Then once I saw the WNBA sort of rebranding and really kind of getting their act together, I figured the timing is better now. So with their relaunch, uh, we'll start doing more women's covers on the magazine. Um, there will be women's merch, mm -hmm. so sort of unisex, but in women's sizing. Um, we've already put out, uh, well, actually our first t-shirt is launching um, in a week or so. We're working on a deal with um, a WNBA licensee to, to do in, uh, slam women's covers, mm -hmm. cover tees. So that's going to happen and we're all in on women's. We have a full-time editor doing it and original content around, you know, girls and, um, you know, from a fashion perspective, what they're wearing to games. So it's a, a, just like, you know, regular slam, sure. but for women. So, uh, so, so what's ahead? What can, what, what's uh, a lot of hap a lot has happened these two years or so, but I'm sure you got a lot more plans sort of in the fold. What's your next area of expansion? Where, where do you see the next opportunity for slam? I think events. Um, we've, we have uh, a draft suite. We just did our eighth year of it, mm -hmm. um, held actually in this building, which started out as a gifting suite, and uh, we used to do it with Foot Locker, and now it's become more of a content opportunity. Um, we still gift them, you know, slam gear and stuff like that, but we really capture content and brought on AT&T as our title sponsor, which is a big deal. So we had AT&T, Stance, Bose, um, who am I missing? I think they were the three main spots. Oh, Levi's. So Levi's did custom jackets uh, for all the, you know, so it's all the NBA rookies that come through. So we did that. And then last August, we did our first high school uh, all-star game up at Dykeman Park. Um, Mid-August, and we're, our second year's coming up this August. And we'll have 20 of the top high school players in the country playing outdoors. Yeah, and they really have never played outdoors in the park, sort of on a street ball vibe. So that's also a great game, great content moment. Uh, Body Armor on board as a sponsor, Nike's involved. So um, yeah, so events, merch, obviously social, sure. video content. And then the magazine is still um, profitable and the cover actually matters more than anything. So um, every kid, you know, grows up to be on the cover of Slam. So it's still a big deal. So ironically, <laughs> 25 years later, kind of yeah, it comes full circle and the mag is still very special to the kids and it's very tangible. Cool. So.